Welcome to Introduction to Conservation Biology at Wilkes University. I am Dr. Jess Stratford. This chapter I just want to kind of define and put the define the scope of what is conservation biology. When you hear biodiversity used there's really breaks down the to two uses. One is the vernacular definition that is everyday use when people say biodiversity and what they mean is just the living things out in the wild. The scientists, we could look at biodiversity in three different ways. Uh, one is genetic diversity. That's one measure. So this could be genetic diversity within a species. It could be the different species. It could be higher levels of taxonomic rank, so how many phyla are in a particular site. Uh, one common, probably the most common way biodiversity is recognized is species diversity, so how many species are out there. And then another way of defining biodiversity is how many ecosystem services are in a particular site. So we can look at um, how many decomposers, how many uh, nitrogen fixers, pollinators of uh, seed dispersers are at a particular site. So conservation biology could be defined many ways. And in the late 1980s, early 1990s, we looked at it as uh, the science of preserving biodiversity. What conservation biologists do is we want to understand the impact of humans on biodiversity at, at all those scales we mentioned, the genetic species diversity and ecosystem services. One interesting thing about conservation, biological conservation, is that it's a value-laden field, much like medicine. So in medicine, we don't want our people to die. We don't like people being sick. In conservation biology, we don't like extinction due to humans. We recognize there is natural extinctions, but those that are driven by humans we see as potentially bad. We see degraded ecosystems as being bad and ecosystems with um, degraded ecosystem services as being bad. Conservation biology is high, highly synthetic and that for one, if you're going to study a system, you have to know the players and we have to know how they interact so who they are and what they do and how they interact not only that um, for conservation biology to be successful uh, we have to understand human behaviors and um, those things that regulate human behaviors including politics and economics Biodiversity is important uh, to humans directly and indirectly. If it has direct value, we call this the utilitarian value and that they provide some benefit to humans. So there are some aspects of biodiversity we eat, right? And these could be domesticated crops such as corn, corn and soybean, or they could be wild foods that we get from the wild. Uh, such as fish, deer, rabbits. Uh, the wild can provide fiber, right? That could be used for paper and for clothes. We know that many things, uh, many um, plants and animals actually can provide medicine for humans, and that. The wild provides a source of enjoyment for people. And we can monetize some of these aspects of biodiversity easily and some not so easily. So easy would be things like substitution costs. So if we're looking at pollinators, uh, substitution costs would estimate how much it would cost for a person to go out and perform that same action. So instead of just uh, letting bees pollinate an apple orchard, how much would it cost for humans to go out, 
with little tiny paintbrushes and pollinate apple, an apple orchard. We can also look at how much we are willing to pay to preserve and go see certain things. Oh, so how much a person charges to go watch whales, that's a way to estimate how much a whale provides to humans, right? And all they're getting is a, uh, is enjoyment out of it. So there are some aspects that are much harder to monetize. So, uh, for example, the example I put here, it's happier to watch woods pass by in a car than it is say, um, suburbs, just miles and miles of suburbs or cornfields. That's much nicer to go through forests. And, um, another aspect of biodiversity that is of interest to conservation biologists is the intrinsic value. And that means that uh, certain aspects of biodiversity, such as certain species have value, even if it's not important to humans, even if it's not important that, uh, we can sell it or provide some medicine or we can wear its skin that the animal for its own sake is good to be there. And for particularly for these intrinsic values, where do they come from? What does that mean that it's good for something to exist? So the big picture I want to get across is that no religion, no major religion thinks that biodiversity is bad. And many of them have statements uh, very explicitly stating the importance of biodiversity for, for humans. Um, let me just go through very briefly the, 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 the big religions and how they view biodiversity. So, uh, Sikhs, uh, don't have anything I could find that explicitly states anything about, uh, biodiversity, but they do value nature and the degradation of nature is seen as a bad thing. This is also true for, uh, Hinduism. Buddhists, it's a little bit more explicit that they should do no harm. And that includes other living things. So what's interesting about this view of Buddhism is it's very individual animal centric. Although more and more, I see writings that express, uh, not to do any harm expressed to entire ecosystems rather than just individual animals. So the Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all share the creation story. And if we look at that story where essentially God creates humans muck it up and then God destroys and he preserves two of every animal that whole story of, of creation in the flood can have two major interpretations that I've seen. One is a dominion attitude where humans are placed here to dominate the earth. The other one is a stewardship attitude where humans are put here to take care of creation. So much like Noah took care of the animals during the flood, humans are here on the earth to take care of creation. And within Christianity, if you look at the major sects, so Catholicism, Methodist and Baptist, they all have official statements that include a stance on protecting the environment. And then of course, there's no religion, atheism. So that is not a religion, but it is a philosophical view of, of the world. And, uh, although it is a materialistic view, it, that's not to say that atheists do not have values. And the only sort of official statements I've seen coming out of any atheist organizations 
is that um, there's reverence for nature and that comes out of sharing the planet and having shared ancestry for over 3 billion years. The other thing we need to consider when thinking about conservation biology is, you know, what what is natural? When people say a natural system, what does it mean? And I don't want to get bogged down into definitions because it can lead to sort of absurdities. Let me just point out, a natural system is one that ha does not have human influence. Humans are natural, right? We're not synthetic. We are natural. But here, I'm just going to set down the definition as things we create tend not to be natural. So plastics, even though they're created by us, an organism, they are not natural. Let me also point out that natural systems are not necessarily the goal of conservation biology. But the goal of conservation biology is to minimize human impacts. And lastly, let me just say, is there a balance in nature? Uh, no. In fact, uh, I view nature as constantly changing both in space and in time. And that we know things like climate changes. We know extinctions are real. What we want to avoid are human-induced extinctions and human-induced climate change. So I need to point out what conservation biology is not. This is sort of the... Um, family dinner uh, topics that come up when you find out people find out that you are a conservation biologist and they say it is what does that mean and uh, there's many misconceptions out there let me just point out that conservation biology is not animal rights the focus of animal rights is on individual animals where they want to reduce pain and suffering out of an individual animal Conservation biology, on the other hand, focuses on populations and ecosystems. We often find ourselves at odds with animal rights, and a huge debate that's been out there for a number of years now is what to do with outdoor feral cats. So animal rights people will often want to support a cat colony and uh, this will produce some angst with conservation biologists that are trying to protect wild animals. Because we do know that uh, wild cats will kill uh, many, many, many small animals. Conservation is also not preservationism. That is, we do not want people to live in caves. That is something that's alleged uh an attitude that people think conservation biologists have, but we do not. We don't want to lower human standards. In fact, we know that people with higher living standards tend to value nature much more and want to protect nature more. So we want people with higher standards. We want to maximize human living standards, but minimize their impacts as much as we can.